what we're sort of understanding is the environment as a whole can impact that child. So it's almost everything in the world around that developing child. Uh, it could be the provision of appropriate nutrition. It could be uh, the health of the mother uh, during pregnancy. It could be uh, psychosocial issues in the family or poverty in the family. Um, it's really the entire environment around that child that contributes to that child's development through that remarkable period of going from a single cell to a perfectly formed uh, functional human being, going off to school with all the inquisitiveness and enthusiasm that children do. We know that the child develops as a, a whole, and yet in academia uh, and in society, we've tended to hive off different parts of that child. So we've given the health part of that child to the medical profession, the learning part of that child to the education profession, and the behavior and social functioning part to social scientists. But the child doesn't develop like that. The child develops as a whole. And the purpose of the Fraser Mustard Institute for Human, De uh, Human Development is to break down those silos, to bring those disciplines together and model better the developing child so that we hope to uh, develop sparks of innovation as a result of that transdisciplinary collaboration. We've made some uh, remarkable progress uh, in uh, the health of mothers and children over recent years. Um, the Millennium Development Goals included uh, goals four and five focused on maternal health and child health. In general they focused more on survival, so the survival of mothers during pregnancy and the survival of children during the first five years of life. Um, progress has been made, um, maybe not as much as we'd want, but nevertheless progress has been made. And I think the next step is moving beyond just survival to quality of life. And this is the particular interest of those of us interested in uh, early life and human development, to go beyond survival and look at uh, quality of health, look at quality of uh, the human potential of that child and their well-being. There are certain countries where there has been um, significant success and there are other countries, uh, particularly in certain regions of Africa, when there has been minimal success. I think the other thing is that this whole concept of child development is very much linked to uh, the status of women in society. And those countries which uh, acknowledge um, and empower women uh, in their lives tend to do better than those uh, that do not. The basic premise that early life is important for a child's lifelong health and well-being is common amongst all children. But we know that if the environment has adversity in it, then there are significant challenges to that development. And certainly uh, children in uh, low-income, low and middle-income countries uh, do have certain adversities that are not faced uh, by children in high-income countries, particularly around the provision of nutrition, in exposure to infectious diseases, and in certain areas of Africa, you know, problems around the absence of parents uh, because of HIV AIDS. So I think these are um, you know, particular challenges for these children. We're starting to understand the mechanisms by which the environment interacts uh, with the um, genetic blueprint of that child as it develops. And so that's starting to give us some clues as to where we might intervene. But we already know uh, some areas that are quite fruitful. Uh, we know that focusing on 
enrichment of the environment around the child in its early years can have significant impacts, positive impacts, on its capability in being ready for learning at school. And more recently, we've recognised that breastfeeding actually can have a positive influence on some of the adversities that lead to poor health outcomes, such as obesity and uh, metabolic disorders. At the moment, we're looking uh, at interventions that are focused on specific time points uh, during that first two or three thousand days. We know, for instance, that the health of the mother going into pregnancy is very, very important in determining the health of that child in uh, adolescence and adulthood. So we want to look at uh, enhancing education and health of young women. Um, we know that uh, the pregnancy period itself is critically important. Uh, the nutrition of the mother, uh, the levels of stress that the mother is under, uh, contribute to um, the environmental challenges on the baby. And so we're looking at uh, programs in pregnancy to optimize the mother's health. And then we know also that uh, early interventions in childhood um, are hugely important. Breastfeeding, for example, um, particularly exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life, has been shown to have all sorts of positive um, impacts on the child's uh, health and well-being. The other thing we know is that in early childhood, the developing brain is a remarkably plastic organ. Uh, we actually are born with many more connections between the neurons in our brain than we have at any other point in our life. And there's a loss of these connections and a strengthening of other connections in the brain during this period of early life. And what's critically important is that the environment of that child is one that's enriched so that the important connections that have to be made in that child's brain to realize that child's full potential as an individual um, are strengthened uh, and the environment plays a particularly valuable role in that. The child develops as a whole. Um, we've hived off the health, learning and social functioning parts of that child to various uh, professions, whether it's the medical profession or the education profession. But the child doesn't develop like that. The child's brain, it doesn't have independent portions for those functions. It functions as an integral of all of those. And I think in order to fully understand um, how a child, uh, how we can optimize those developmental trajectories for the child, we have to bring those disciplines back together to break down the traditional silos and focus on a child-centric view of development rather than a professional discipline view of development. First of all, that's quite easy, is um, everyone understands um, or is willing to accept the importance of investing in children. Uh, children are the future of our society. Um, and every country uh, wants children to develop in as optimal a way as possible. Uh, in academically, it's been particularly exciting to see how different disciplines can come together and create sparks of innovation uh, because they're doing things that they couldn't have done uh, by focusing on their own aspect, whether that's the health or the uh, learning or the social functioning aspects. And then I think the, in the longer term, I think we're just starting to identify potential interventions that will improve the lives of those children, whether they're in uh, Canada or in low- and middle-income countries. We're very excited about a number of programs uh, we're initiating. Um, we have programs that are looking at the relationship of the developing brain and how that 
promotes uh, good behavior and mental health in the child uh, and an ability to optimally learn at school. Uh, we're very interested in how the health of that child during uh, early life can impact its risk of metabolic disorders such as obesity and diabetes. And we're also interested in how issues around child behavior are impacted by inter uh, interactions between the environment and that baby's development. In terms of research programs, I think where the real excitement is going to be is understanding how the environment interacts with our genetic makeup. Uh, the genetic makeup is the blueprint for our development, but it's not set in stone. Uh, in fact, the environment modifies uh, not the actual genetics itself, but how that genetic plan is read. And that is the rationale and the reason why we all end up slightly differently as children uh, and adults. And then finally, I think we're very interested in developing training programs and educational content uh, with respect to uh, early human development. And we hope that these programs uh, will bring together students from all over the world, uh, from both uh, high and middle and low income countries, um, because the concepts of early child development are common to all mankind.